Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Today we are actually going to get to take a look at something quite new and quite unique. And uh, it's something that's been leaking out in the media for a little while, but I know that MSI are going to make a big song and dance about Project Zero at CES. Now, obviously, I'm filming this a long time before CES because I'm actually there right now. So if you are watching this video around the week of the 8th to the 12th, I am in Vegas. So there will be lots of other videos going live on the channel. There will be lots of content going live on Facebook and the website as I'm trotting myself around to try and bring you all the latest and greatest new tech, obviously in 2024. Now, something that we will see during 2024 is the... Uh, motherboards and hardware to support it coming through that will support uh, the connectors from the power supply to go on the back of motherboards and that is the first one that I've had through here today although we have covered another one on the website uh, from Asus but this is the first one that I've had in my hands and it's the uh, B650M Project Zero from MSI. Now it is uh, an MATX board and they have sent me the Pano M100R uh, case to uh, that supports it. So effectively, I have motherboard, I have case. They both work with rear-facing connectors, and it's time for us to take a look. So first and foremost, the case, the Pano M100R. This is uh, has a very kind of similar feel to it. We've seen a few cases come out recently with angular designs on the corner. I guess MSI are trying to go that little bit different in that there's uh, isn't a 45 degree angle. There's comes out a little bit and then goes back. And there's also a bit of a, a cut angle on the uh, front of it. But anyway, long story short, angled front and they're saying pano, obviously panoramic view. Now straight away, the first thing that I thought when I saw it were the fans and I thought they were on exhaust because of the way that they've been set up, but they are actually intake fans. They are reversed bladed fans. So when they spin, they are drawing fresh air in from the back of the case, uh, but without the frame along the front of them to keep things all looking extra clean and tidy. I think that is a fair play touch to MSI for even considering doing that rather than just flipping the fans around. You do get the three fans in the front and the three fans in the roof. And I have just put the uh, E360 core liquid in the roof just to show you it fully populated. So you can see it with a big fat 360 uh, uh, rad and AIO in the roof. And I've also got 4070 Ti Supreme in there just to show you with a humongous graphics card in there as well. I'm not suggesting that this would be how I uh, would purchase it, but it's more about the fact I can show you with large components in there how it's going to look for you at home. Now, as I have said, the main thing is really the case and the motherboard working together for the rear facing connectors. So I'm going to pull the graphics card out so that we can get a better look. OK, now without that graphics card in there, it's so much more apparent about the efforts that MSI have gone to to make this clean and tidy. With the other board that we saw recently, there was none of this extra shielding around the board. So the uh, solder points for the 24 pin are actually hidden underneath that and you just cannot see them at all because they've added in this uh, metal plate and that plate is only there so that you can't see the solder points behind Then when we come down to the rest of the board everything else that's connected at the bottom of the board normally so your um, Front panel audio the front panel connectors your USB Everything is round the back as well and they've extended the M.2 uh, heatsink for the board right down to the bottom just to clean everything up. The chipset heatsink has been made larger just to clean those lines up. And I really do commend them for going that extra step compared to what the competition has done so far to make it feel that little bit more special. The only thing I can say though is it is genuinely a shame that 
I fitted such a massive graphics studs to it because it does completely hide it. When we pan up to the top of the board on the top left, what you can see is you've got massive uh, heat sinks up here for the VRMs, but the two 8-pin connectors are actually hidden round the back. And I think really one of the things we do have to say is from this point, you can see the uh, 12 VH PWR cable there. The graphics card power is something I think that all of the brands are going to have to address sooner rather than later because I think we're at the point now where we want to have that connector on the very back of the graphics card so that we cannot see it at all so that it does work with this new ecosystem that is evolving. Moving round to the back now. Uh, this is a, a story of two halves. It's a double-edged sword. Um, however you want to put it, no cables around the front. Lots and lots of cables round the back. Now, I will say that I don't think the case itself is helping matters because there is a large hub here for the uh, RGB fans which then have daisy chains on them so that they work with the uh, one in the roof. And uh, so we've got three fans in the roof, three fans down the side, one fan in the back. There's a total of seven fans in here. We've got lots of daisy chains uh, to be able to power everything. Um, so the eight pins at the top here, I actually think that uh, we're probably going to see uh, some 90 degree connectors becoming more apparent. I don't think the eight pin connectors, if done properly with solid pins, should have the problems that we've had with 12 VH PWR cables. And I think if we were to be able to directly 90 degree them in, or even have power supplies with 90 degree cables on them already, I think that would tidy things up no end. The 24 pin would definitely be better if it had gone straight that way. Weirdly, looking at this, I mean, I have used MSI's own Mag A1000G, and they were the first people live with PCR Express 5 support in power supplies. But uh, even though I've used that, I am now starting to see why Corsair may have launched the shift power supplies. Because I do think that if you were to have a shift power supply here, directly come up with a very short ITX length, 24 pin cable and a 90 degree connector you could actually make a proper feature of the back of the board and your power supply so you could easily have a glass panel on the back i'm saying that now i'm saying that straight away that's where this is going to go we're going to end up with 90 degree connectors very very short power supply cables and either straight into the power supply down the bottom or many more people using corsair shift stuff because I, it's just, is ripe for it straight away. We could make this such a beautiful part of a build and it's all gonna come down to the imagination for everyone at home. But the other things I do want to draw your attention to while I zoom in is underneath that hub, you can see here, USB connectors, we've got fan connectors down here, RGB connectors, there's SATA connectors there. Bring it across so that you can actually see Tom. Look, there's SATA connectors there that are hidden just underneath here. I'm trying to get it in the light for you, but the SATA connectors are there. It's just being hidden by a lot of other uh, RGB-ness and it was taking me forever to try and uh, hide, hide it. The 90 degree USB 3 here, which goes off to the A port, <coughs> is perfect but the uh, 90 degree for the C connector definitely, definitely needed a 90 degree cable on it. This does touch the side panel. It's very, very tight, but the side panel does go on. You don't have to give it a, too much of a push, um, but it's not ideal. That is the one thing about this case I'm going to say straight away, other than more cable tidying options, needs work. So B650 and M80X was a strange choice as a starter for an entirely new platform, but it's just the parts that I had sent to me so that I would be able to show you at home. This board specifically, I probably wouldn't put a Ryzen 9 in it, but an, a Ryzen 5 or even a Ryzen 7, if you weren't planning on doing too much overclocking, I think would be absolutely fine with this. 
The case itself, you've obviously got the reverse bladed fans, really like that touch. The USB-C connector on the back, not necessarily ideal, but the fact that you can put a 360 in the roof and everything else nestles in there fine and you do get a lot of glass because of that uh, pano front. It is a really lovely touch. Now at the time of going to press, the time of making the video, I haven't been given any prices yet. If I do get any updates, it will, if you click the link underneath to go to the website, I'll make sure everything is covered there. But one thing I will say is please like, subscribe and comment. Please also, if you're interested, head over to the channel to go and have a look at all the stuff that I'm going to be going to take a look at at CES because I am going to see uh, MSI and it will be one of the first videos that I do put up because I'm going to see them on the Monday, which is super early. It's actually I'm going to see them the day that this is meant to go live. I'm meant to be there. At, I think it's two o'clock uh, Vegas time. So uh, there's going to be so much coming uh, forward. My closing thoughts is I love the fact that, uh, that everyone is now doing this. I actually think it should have been like it from the start. One of the things I do want to see, though, is graphics card changes and also we're going to need to think about cable tidying around the back of uh, the cases a lot more. I also think that we are going to see an insurgence or a lot more short ITX sort of length power supply cables and I don't think Corsair are going to be the only people with side entry power supplies by the end of the year unless John and the team at Corsair have been incredibly careful with their patents. If they have, then I think there's going to be a huge kind of like, not necessarily a draw, but there's going to be an even bigger reason to buy a Swift power, switch power supply for one of these than there would have been with the normal setup before. And it does make me think that they've uh, planned ahead quite spectacularly. Obviously, with the MSI setup, though, I do need to say they did send it. It is lovely. It does exactly what it should. I do just think that when you're going to end up with a normal ATX power supply, the cables are going to be a bit long and you're going to have to work harder with them. Uh, but maybe some 90 degree adapters for the 24 pin and the two 8 pins would help get things looking that little bit nicer. Anyway, that's my first look at rear facing uh, power supply rear facing power supply, rear facing motherboard connectors and the hardware around it, but it certainly won't be the last.